over. This is our next question period, so if you have questions for Monia or Ikram, um, now's the time to ask them. I know some people have to go. I know you have a question, Miriam, or you have a reflection, maybe. There's just a question that uh, you asked in one of your uh, emails, and it's about whether fiction is, is like re could represent uh, the problems women face in Canada, or if um, nonfiction does. And I personally believe that um, both do, but sometimes fiction is taken less seriously than nonfiction because I. I know a lot of people don't take something serious like a novel or a film until it says it's based on a true story. So some, I think that nonfiction is sometimes better. So what's your reaction to that? Maybe it's sort of funny. Well, <laughs> well, I think these are all kind of tries and uh, attempts and uh, we try our best and, and I don't believe that, uh, I don't agree with the idea that uh, non-fiction are more like efficient than fiction or vice versa. Uh, I mean look at Hollywood, all is it based about is about fiction and people love that and you know you show them a movie and they are just in admiration of the actors and actresses. They want to be like that, and the story sometimes is really like, you know, uh, everybody knows how it is going to end and very predictable. So I think it's just the way how you do it, and also how uh, it will be uh, also um, portrayed, because best the best articles uh, and you know that more than me the younger generation know that very well it's all about how you portray yourself it's all about how like public relation how um, uh, how it's going to be perceived with the general public so fiction non-fiction i think both are venues they are excellent venues um, as long as we, we, we excel at them, as long as we work hard at them, um, I think um, I, I don't see any difference. Sometimes, yes, nonfiction can be more, um, like people maybe can uh, uh, relate somehow to it because they see, oh yeah, those people really existed, but um, I, personally I think uh, both venues are excellent. And uh, we have to, to 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 try them, and we have to uh, to um, uh, just to to tell our stories, whether they are uh, fiction or not. But to tell our stories, and this brings us to the title of this presentation. Okay. So, we have any other questions? Just a response. Do I need one? No. Yeah. Get recorded. Oh, all right, so it's dry. Okay, uh, just in response to that, maybe two points. I don't know what statistics are of uh, what people prefer fiction, nonfiction, but fiction seems to have a broader reach. And it's also less threatening. So you can broach more controversial stuff because it gives you this platform where you distance yourself. So I think in some ways that there's a merit to that depending on what it is that you're addressing. So, Monia, um, I'd just like to commend you because what you've done, I think, is you've really injected a lot of humanity into the uh, way our community, the Muslim community, is portrayed in the media. I think that a lot of the time when we as Muslims complain about the media, what we're complaining about are the headlines that, um, that have to do with uh, things that are happening politically in the Middle East, um, like Sharia law and the way um, the hijab is portrayed as though it's a, a dress code as opposed to a choice, this sort of thing. But when you stand up for human rights, as you did for your husband, um, and as well in writing this novel um, and having these um, Muslim characters, people then say, oh, I can relate to that. And it doesn't matter if you're Muslim or if you're non-Muslim, what you've done is you have connected with people in a very human way. And it doesn't matter if they're Muslim or non-Muslim, and this is a great thing. And I think that this is really what we have to do 
uh, in the Muslim community is whether it's fiction or non-fiction, um, we have to almost see past our Muslimness in a way. Um, and then this takes us out of that whole thing where we feel that we have to defend the entire community um, when something bad happens. Okay. Um, good evening, Munia, Nikram, and everybody else. Um, I think what I'm taking away from here tonight is, I would like to think maybe that's what you guys were talking about, is um, there is no one Muslim community. There are many, and you know, within, so there is no one Somali Muslim community, there is no one Arab Muslim community, there is no one Pakistani, there is no one quote-unquote Canadian Muslim community. And I'm not quite sure what else should we be doing in terms of the media um, to try to have them see this message or understand that Hadan and I are friends, but we're very different, but it's okay. We're, you know, we're Somali, we're Muslim, Canadian, you know, we watch some TV shows that we don't like, some we don't like, and that is okay. And it's okay for the media, for the mainstream society to see us that way. Assalamu alaikum, Ikram and Monia. Um, my question is for Monia. Um, I attempted to write books before, and I found that it was something that is can be really challenging to kind of motivate yourself to finish it. <laughs> and I was just wondering if your book was something that was purely uh, like a hobby, like something you did out of pleasure and just something you wanted to do, or did you also feel some kind of an obligation to um, like portray your reality and portray the reality of the Muslim women, or was it just like I want to write a book and, and I'll write from what I know? Um, my question is about goes some, to something a little bit deeper. I was fortunate enough to study psychology in my undergraduate studies. Um, we learned something called stereotype threat, and that's a phenomenon where when you're faced with your minority status, um, sometimes you can. Um, impede your intellectual abilities uh, to, to a large degree. Um, and I did some research in looking at minority representation in popular media. So my question kind of goes to what, what, what we are most affected by is what we see the most of. And if we're being uh, represented in really high emotion, high stereotype things like shows like 24, movies like Clash, that's what we take away from it is how, how those things affect us. So if we take a more light approach and we use stereotypes and it's taken as less serious, the good thing is that it's believable, but an even better thing is that we're able to um, go on with our daily lives in, a, in an easier way. Okay. It's more of a comment, I don't know if you guys can see. Uh, I remember the one uh, about uh, yeah, I guess about the writing, but also I, 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 I don't know. Okay. Um, the first, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of, when, when I wrote uh, the novel, uh, for me, first of all, I had the idea, and then I went to speak with um, a publisher, and then I told them about my idea and they said yes they like it but they won't tell me whether they will accept it or not until I present them the whole manuscript. So for me it became my objective. I wanted to work on that. So I took it very seriously and every day I, I wrote, I wrote, I wrote, I wrote for one year and then I had the book ready. I know it's hard because you have your kind of uh, moment or where, where there is no inspiration, where uh, it's very, it's, it's a very difficult process and everybody knows that. But I think if you are, um, I, I believe in talent, but also I believe a lot in hard work. And if you work hard and if you, especially now, um, there are many things available for people to learn how to write, to correct themselves. And, but the, the most important thing is to have an objective and work very seriously towards that. And um, I know it, like, I have a lot of ideas and I cannot put them all in, like, uh, in place and like, you know, start working on them. 
But once you start working, I think it's it's you you have to motivate yourself and you have to tell you know uh, I really want to finish that and I'm I'm sure that and I hope you have like really a lot of a uh, lot of courage and I hope you will you will be able to finish your work and and you know what there are people who have been working on their novel or on their book for 15 10 years. I'm not trying to discourage you here. On the contrary, I think I'm trying to give you some kind of, you know, motivation because um, this sort of creativity and you know, uh, it doesn't come uh, like over a year. It comes um, over many years, and uh, it depends on the human beings. Some people, which will take with them more than you know uh, others. So. But, uh, but definitely, uh, if we have the intention, I'm sure, like, you know, you are going to be able and, uh, to, to do that, especially, especially if you like it. You have to enjoy writing and you have to like it, and I'm sure you are going to, to be able to do it. So, can you address one more question? Oh, some question? Oh, um, well, I, I really, I think we, uh, we are communities, and I think, for me, stereotypes, they're very helpful, and I think, um, but I, well, sometimes I find, uh, speaking of Muslim women, since we are talking about Muslim women tonight, I find we are uh, kind of, we fall into the trap of the same kind of thing we are accusing the media of. So we often simplify um, if somebody comes to, uh, you know, the question comes, what's a Muslim woman doing this or, and I think the simple way of addressing what a Muslim woman is, which is nothing that I can really talk, if somebody asks me to talk about Muslim women, I don't even know what to say. Because there's no such thing, in my opinion. Um, and we, we don't talk about any other group of women, especially since it's not happen. So people invite you to forums and say, come and talk about Muslim women. What is that? So I think we, we, we do need to, give for, for us to not take those same simplistic um, kind of descriptions that we are complaining about. Because we, you know, I found, I, I, I do find, um, we're all affected by the media in different ways, even the most active of us. So I think it's good to be vigilant um, and, and be careful in, in not falling into the same simple, not complex, easily explainable half an hour presentation of Muslim women. It can be done. No, I don't think that's uh, the case. None of you probably would think that, but I think we should just be kind of vigilant about uh, those kind of simplifying. Uh, very quickly. Uh, we always, when we think about media, we always think about the mainstream media. But what is now more and more important, and I'm glad that Kim is here with Rebel, I mean, there are a lot of other sort of media. And this is the chance of the new generation, but also all the minorities, all the, I mean, I'm not saying like the alternative media is necessarily for the marginalized or for the left out, but whether we like it or not, uh, ma uh, mainstream media is not going to be the most representative more and more, and the alternative media is the one taking over, and with time we are going to see that. There are other venues like blogs, like, um, uh, like uh, I mean, I don't believe a lot in, in, in social media, I mean, maybe because I'm from like sort of an other generation, but for sure, for, for a new generation, yes, Facebook, Twitter, all these are all sort of media that can be used to tell your story, to tell, I mean, and there are so much different way, um, like this article uh, you wrote and how they did it, you find this every time, every time you, you want it, some point to be uh, um, made somehow, and then they kind of distort it to they distort it to you. Uh, I don't know whether there is good faith or bad faith, whatever. But the end result is some. It's not always what you really want. So it's more to have this direct contact with people and tell them your story. This is, I think, what we should explore more and more. And this is something a lot of minorities and a lot of people who find it very hard to get into the mainstream media. It is their chance to, to, to be present and to be active. And there are a lot of young people, a lot of huge debates happening in those alternative media. And um, I think uh, it is uh, wonderful to, to, to be part of, of this uh, big uh, growing of, of, uh, 
of another sort of informing people and telling them stories. All right, so, okay, we actually have to get to the next speaker, because we want to make sure, and, and those of you also who are staying for the show to attend, if you can actually move up a bit, because this is actually pretty interactive, so, and you're like, looking you know, like, I don't want to move up, but I know some people have to lean now, feel free to leave, but if you are staying, come up closer to the front.